ولكن هناك مقام اختصه الله سبحانه وتعالى لأهل البيت ما, أش... ما شاركهم أحد من الخلق في هذا المقام وهي الولاية التكوينية المطلقة المطلقة يعني لا يوجد مخلوق ليس هو تحت سيطرة أهل البيت عليهم السلام هذه الله السلام And inshallah, I'll give you a definition in English of what ولاية تكوينية means. It is important that we have and understand this ولاية تكوينية. What can we translate ولاية تكوينية as? ولاية تكوينية, the most appropriate translation for ولاية تكوينية would be existential authority. Basically, the authority over existence. Meaning, I tell you that the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum as-salam, have an authority over the atoms and particles that float around around us right now. The Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, have an authority upon you. This is not something far-fetched, and you'll see in the Quran, it's filled with Wulai Taqwiniya. The Sunnah is filled with Wulai Taqwiniya. And we also read in the Quran, in Surah 33, verse 33, sorry, in Surah Al-Ahzab, it says that the Prophet is more worthy of the believers in themselves. What does that mean? That means the body that I have right now, Rasulullah is more worthy and has control over this body than I do myself. So before I say, I move my hand, no, it's not me move my hand, it's Rasulullah that's giving me this Qudra. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave this wilaya, this qudra to Rasulullah. And he is the one that's more worthy than the believer than himself. That means he's more worthy than the believer than himself. This is also can be grouped under what's called wilaya tashri'iyya. Meaning the Ahlul Bayt, it's incumbent upon us to follow their commands. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to you and tells you go throw yourself in the river, you don't question Rasulullah, you throw yourself in the river. When Imam Sadiq tells his companion, throw yourself in the oven, the famous story that's known. When he asked one of his companions, he was scared, he did not do, do it. He asked the second companion, and he threw himself in the oven, nothing happened to him. Yaqeen. 
Aqeedah. This is what Aqeedah means, when you have a belief in Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. That when he tells you do something, you do it. Wulayta Shari'iyya and Wulayta Kuiniyya. They are all grouped under the same categories. In the Sunnah Nabawiyya. Wulayta Kuiniyya fi Sunnah Nabawiyya. First example we have Salman. Who was Salman? Al Muhammadi. Al Farisi. Who was Salman? Everybody knows who Salman is. Does not anybody know who Salman is? Go read the biography of Salman. Go read the biography of Abu Dhar and Mikdad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given them this gift. This wulaya, but it's a shorter wulaya. The same wulaya taqweeni here. Salman used to walk by the graves and talk to the people in the graves. Wulaya taqweeni here. Sayyidah Zainab salam Allahi alayha. The daughter of the Lion of Allah. The daughter of Amir al Mu'mineen. The daughter of Mawla al Muwahideen. Who was Zainab alayhi salam? Who was Zainab? Muma adraka ma Zainab. Yani where do I come and talk about Sayyidah Zainab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Sayyidah Zainab, when she entered Kufa, there were screeches and screaming. One side was sad, one side was happy. What does Sayyidah Zainab do? Refer, let's see, what's the source? Let me give you the source. Refer to Bihar al Anwar, volume 45. Volume 45 is the uh, volume that was made. By Alam al Majlisi specifically for Imam al Hussein alayhi Page 146, Hadith 7. Al Alam al Majlisi record it, records it from the Ihtijaj of Shaykh al Tabrasi alayhi Radwan. Sayyidah Zainab, when she entered Kufa, what did she do? The Hadith says, She took her hand and she did this. Everybody quieted down. Everybody was quiet. This is Wulai Taqweeni. This is Wulai Taqweeni. Why can't Sayyidah Zainab have this way to queen you? Khudra. And it is not easy to, you know, digest this concept of universal vilayat of the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt. Salawat Quran Akbar. What do I mean by universal authority? In the Shi'i theology, we have a belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted the Prophet of Islam and the Ahlul Bayt the authority which makes it possible for the Wali to exercise his power over everything which exists in the universe. When we talk about it, sometimes, you know, I hear the words, oh, this is all Indo-Pakistani ideas. Maybe, you know, remnant of Hindu influence there. Well, I don't want to talk about any Indian scholar. Let me just quote to you two prominent scholars of this century from the Shia world. One is the late Ayatollah Imam Khomeini, when he talks about this concept of the vilayat of the universal type, and this is a quotation I have in my book, let me just read this here. When he talks about it, that it is a vicegerency pertaining to the whole of creation, by virtue of which all the atoms in the universe humble themselves before the holder of authority. Look at his expression. He says, all the atoms in the universe are there, humble, waiting for his command. It is one of the essential beliefs of our Shia school, school that no one can attain the spiritual status of the Imam, not even the closest of the uh, angels or other prophets before Prophet Muhammad, in fact, according to the traditions that have been handed down to us, this is Imam Khomeini talking, the most noble messenger and the Imams existed before the creation of the world in the form of lights situated beneath the Arsh and the divine throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were superior to other men, even in the sperm from which they grew and in their physical composition. 
So this is one prominent scholar of the Shia world of this century, saying that all the atoms of the universe humble themselves, you know, before the holder of the vilayat and the authority. Going to late Ayatollah Khoui, this is another scholar of the same status, where he talks about this different kinds of vilayat and when it comes to the universal vilayat, he says, as for the first type of vilayat, referring to the universal one, obviously there is no doubt in their authority over the entire creation, as is clear from the ahadith, they will say, oh, so you are putting the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt on the same level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't this shirk? No. If you remember the wordings of Ayatollah Khoui, their authority is weaker compared to the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كذلك عندما نحن نقول أن للرسول صلى الله عليه وآله أو لأهل البيت ولاية تكوينية يعني لكرامتهم عند الله عز وجل لأنهم عباد مكرمون فالله عز وجل يمنحهم قدرة في التصرف في الأشياء في الكون